Hi, I'm Jakub Neukur and I create mobile apps. Usually I use Flutter and native technologies, uh, which is my default choice. And today I wanted to show you how to use shaders in Flutter. Not that long ago, uh, Flutter added support for shaders in Skia, which is the renderer used in, in Flutter. And I wanted to try it because I like to have fun with uh, some uh, graphic uh, effects in applications. Uh, and I wanted to create this gray noise effect in my application for freelancers, for time zone tracking of the clients. And as you can see here in the background, we have gradient, but it is not that um, default gradient that you would see. As here you can see this grain noise effect, so it's not that regular. That's something that graphic designers might like to add in uh, in applications to not make it so uh, so flat. It is also visible in, in the chart view here. Uh, but yeah, let's go to the uh, specifics of, uh, of this implementation. So to add the shader in, uh, into the Flutter application, you need to have, of course, the uh, fragment shader file. Uh, it is almost like the GLSL, which is the uh, OpenGL shading language, but it is slightly adjusted for the Skia, and it is called SKSL. Uh, but let's go to the other parts, uh, as so we'll move to the specifics later uh, in this video. Uh, once you have added the uh, shader into your asset, you need to reference it in the pubspec file. Uh, this is done very similarly to the normal assets, just you have here the shaders segment in, in the pubspec. Once you have this, you can use this in, in your Flutter uh, Dart code. Uh, there are two ways of using shaders in, in Flutter, uh, which is the, uh, the shader mask or uh, just assigning the shader in, into the, uh, into the uh, paint in your custom widget. Uh, so here uh, we have the whole control of the, of the shader. Here in the main file uh, we use the, the shader mask uh, and uh, the shader to be used first needs to be loaded. So usually you would most likely use the stateful widget uh, where you can load it in the in its state. And once it's loaded, set the state. Of course, in the uh, build method, you need to take care of uh, displaying something when the shader is not yet loaded. Here it's a circular uh, progress indicator, but usually probably it wouldn't be it uh, because it would completely change the, uh, the appearance of the widget. Usually you would probably just use the uh, gradient without the, the shader on it, uh, or whatever you have uh, have the applied the, the shader on. Uh, and here in the shader mask, we provide the shader uh, through the shader callback. Uh, it is provided through it because uh, you might want to provide some uh, variables to to your shader uh, to make it uh, animated or or whatever uh, you wish to. Here we provide the time, uh, which is used for some randomization of the, uh, of the shader. And it is referenced here in the uh, shader as uniform. Uniforms are the variables that you can provide to the, to the shader from your code. Uh, here we are providing size for proper calculations of, uh, of the coordinates on the screen. And so we are able to calculate the uh, normalized coordinates, which are from 0 to 1 instead of pixels, for example, from 0 to uh, 1080. And here uh, we are providing the strength for, uh, for defining the strength of the, uh, of the shader. Uh, so let's jump into the, uh, into the code of the shader. Uh, as you can see, the time is used for randomization. And if you take a look uh, at the background, it's changing. It's looking like this uh, TV without the signal back in the days. Uh, to make it more visible, we can use the strength. And right now it's looking ugly because it's not uh, subtle like it was. Uh, but now you will see more of this green noise effect. Uh, how is it calculated? Uh, it's 
most of this is happening in here. You can see that modifier at first has 0 0.1, uh, which is used to make the value uh, less uh, different than it uh, would be. Because if you take a look at just sinus here, uh, we have this uh, value ranging from minus 1 to 1. But once we uh, multiply it by 0 0.1, it's more flat uh, and it's ranging now from 0 0.1 to minus uh, 0 0.1 as you can see here. Uh, what is happening here? Uh, we are adding the strength. What it does, uh, it's just moving the, uh, the line higher. So if we add 0 0.5, uh, the value will uh, range uh, by 0 0.2 as well, but it will be with higher value. Uh, and this is basically how we adjust the, the strength of the, uh, of the grain, grain noise effect. Uh, because as you can see here, it's later used to, uh, to multiply the white color. So if it's like, uh, if the uh, result of this calculation is 0 0.2, uh, we'll have just uh, here we'll have just 0 0.2 0 0.2 uh, etc etc uh, also the alpha will be 0 0.2 so it won't overlay the uh, the gradient so much and the result can be seen in here uh, to randomize this uh, with time variable uh, I've used here just some uh, Static values uh, of random uh, vector two, uh, which just worked well to to provide this uh, unregular uh, grain noise effect. Uh, this is basically uh, some calculations on on these values to provide the the noise value. Uh, we first uh, calculate the dot value of the current uh, current coordinate. Uh, this is made so so the, the value, the result value will be deterministic, and it will differ between the points on the on the screen. Uh, then we calculate the sinus of it and, and just take the the fraction por point of this uh, fraction part of this uh, value. So if we have a result like this, we'll just have 0 0.543, and this results with some color like between 0 and 1 uh, which takes this effect on on the gradient that we have here uh, and that would be basically it uh, sounds pretty simple uh, usually you would take this uh, fragment shaders from from the internet or generate it with chat gpt as usually this is some math to be calculated here uh, and yeah that would be it thanks for watching